I think there will be some time gap when it goes to YouTube. Can I go ahead and test it? I think uh, that's when I see it on my screen, then uh, I will take it. Reload live. Okay. Good morning, friends. Welcome to this uh, a very exciting session on uh, visual note taking method. And we are happy to have you here. We all welcome all of you on behalf of uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, University Delhi. And uh, in the beginning, uh, we have uh, uh, like a lot of the uh, participation. It's so huge that uh, we uh, have gone live streaming on YouTube uh, currently. So uh, first of all, uh, I'm happy to have my uh, Ambedkar University Delhi uh, faculty with me. In addition to that, uh, we have some international friends from various countries. And uh, to begin with, uh, let me request Professor Amol, uh, who is a professor of English in Ambedkar University, Delhi, director of the uh, Center of English Language Education and director of IQAC at uh, Ambedkar University, Delhi. Uh, so, uh, Professor Amol, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ramesh ji, and welcome, uh, uh, Dr. Zaid. Uh, good morning to all our viewers from India. And I'm aware that there are also viewers from all over the world. So good afternoon and good evening as appropriate to your part of the world. Uh, we are excited to welcome you all to this session on behalf of uh, the Ambedkar University as well as its planning division and the internal quality assurance cell. Uh, and we hope that this is going to be a very enriching and exciting session for us all. Over the last decade in particular, with the tremendous advances in uh, information and communication technology, we, especially the teachers and the learners of all kinds, have been acutely aware that we have to make a shift to more and more uh, technological ways of teaching and learning. But the pandemic situation has imposed that need on us with such force and such urgency that we have to immediately scramble and uh, uh, rebuild our capacities, pick up new skills and change our not only ways of doing, but even ways of thinking about education. And uh, in this series of various capacity building sessions, it is essential that we come to know what opportunities and affordances uh, ICT tools offer. This particular session uh, will be one of those uh, important enriching sessions where we'll be able to change some of our practical ways, how we deal with our teaching, with our learners and with our content. So I'm really happy that uh, we are having this session today and we are going to learn a few things for ourselves. Uh, without much ado, I think I would hand it over back to Professor Ramesh for further proceedings. Uh, thank you, Professor Amol. So nice of you. And now, friends, it's the time to know our uh, hero of the session. Uh, <laughs> we, we fondly call him as Captain Jet. So let me I feel very happy in introducing and uh, I'll share his uh, uh, biodata. It is coming up on your screen quickly. Okay, you see him here now. Uh, his full name is uh, uh, Mr. Jad Ali Alsagov, and he is a learning innovation specialist and an e-learning expert with 20 years experience in higher education. He is the founder of uh, and CEO of AQL Learning Innovation Consultancy, which provides training and consultancy in learning innovation, 
drawing, visual note taking, educational technology, memory improvement, uh, speed and smart reading and thinking skills. So you can see that here. And he has given over 100 talks and workshops locally and internationally uh, since uh, means for the past uh, uh, one decade. And he is known for being innovative, engaging and inspiring speaker. You can see from the photographs that uh, he's so popular among you know, various age groups, including the kids and the grown up everywhere. And don't miss the uh, photograph in the lower right corner of him <laughs> as a road model of not only the, the, the mental health, but the physical health is also very important uh, for us. And uh, in addition to that, when he inspires people, not only that, you know, he ignited my passion in me also. In my childhood, I was a very good, uh, uh, you know, drawing artist, but then forgot about it. So during one of his uh, uh, workshops, I got self-inspiration and you can see the photograph there that uh, I uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, bring my uh, passion back. He has an educational background in psychology, uh, the bachelor's and IT in the, as the master's degree in uh, 2013 and 14. He was ranked among the top 10 most influential people in the corporate, uh, just a minute, uh, there. Uh, but when he is, you know, giving uh, uh, the training to so many people, sometimes he says that, uh, you know, get tired. So digital drawing is hard work. See <laughs> there about him. Now about his uh, uh, skills, uh, he has been, uh, you know, a wonderful uh, trainer on gamification. And then he was ranked in 2013 and 2014 among the top 10 most influential people in corporate e-learning sector for the Asia Pacific region by Bob Little Press and Public Relations. And he has also been an ACAP trainer, member of the National e-learning and MOOC committees under KPN Malaysia, and is a certified human resource development fund trainer. Uh, and uh, in 2019, uh, he was recently appointed as a board member of Unique Scale in Istanbul, Turkey. So this is his, uh, I, I try to make it a brief introduction of him, otherwise it will take a whole lot of keeping in view his achievements. So I don't want to uh, you know, take more time because uh, the uh, exciting session, I'm also waiting to go ahead. So over to you, Captain Jet, and thank okay. you so much for accepting our request to have you with us today. Thank you, okay. please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Ambedkar University, uh, and also would like to thank uh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Latir and Prof Amish and Prof Amul for making this happen. Uh, without you, I would not be able to be here and get a nice, good audience, inshallah, and we can share about uh, different things. But what I'll do now is, uh, I just want to say, can you just say I'm here? Because sometimes, you know, webinar, you, they, they're here, but they're not really here. Can you just say hi in the, in the, in the chat room? On, I'm following the YouTube on my phone. Uh, maybe just say hi, so at least I know you're there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, share my screen. What I'm going to share, let's do here. Okay, I'm going to share my PowerPoint screen and I'm going to do full screen. Uh, the first thing you might notice is uh, my hair looks different now. This is my, uh, since the lockdown when the barbers start closing down, I, I decided to cut myself and I tried all funny hairstyles and then suddenly then I just shaved it off and I found that very easy. So until I go back to the barber, I, I prefer <laughs> being fully shaven. Okay, so today's session. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, so many names say hi, hi. It's great to have you here. Uh, so now we're going to talk about uh, visual note-taking. Uh, you'd be surprised, uh, I've been very much in educational technology for nearly 20 years, and I've tried some of the most sophisticated technology, and now I've, as I get older, if you wonder how much, I'm about 40 plus now, 47, and now I'm going back to pen and paper and stylus and tablets, but more into drawing, which is uh, something that's been going on for thousands of years. Okay, so the first thing I would like to ask you, uh, how do you feel? Can you draw or not? Can you just say, I can draw, <laughs> I can't draw, can you draw or not? 
And that's, I think that's one very important thing to, to, to have that confidence. Do you think you can draw or not? Okay. So that's very important. So what we're going to do now is uh, uh, we're going to look at this next slide here. Uh, and it says, imagination is more important than what? What is imagination more important than? Let me just, I have the chat room on, because the, the funny thing with YouTube is delayed about 30 seconds or 15 seconds after. Okay. So what is imagination is more important than? Anyone? And who said it? Uh, I think it's very important to keep this in mind because we, we keep on saying that uh, it's more important, but we don't emphasize more on it. Uh, okay. So imagination is more important than? Creativity, Shanikwal says. Some say knowledge. Yes, knowledge. And who said this? I mean, I mean, it's known to say it. It's actually. Can anyone? Uh, let's see. We have a chat room. Let me just check the chat room. Okay. Uh, Einstein. Yes. Uh, Kush Kushbu said Einstein. As here in the Zoom, we are thirty seconds ahead. So, yes, Einstein said that according to what I've learned. Uh, and that's very important to keep in mind because uh, the two things that stop people from drawing, we're talking about visual note taking to the end. One is I cannot draw. I think I can't draw. And if I, you know, I, I'm not gifted. God didn't give me this gift. And first thing we need to know is drawing is actually a skill. So that's something that can be learned. Of course, to draw like uh, Leonardo da Vinci, Mona Lisa, of course, that's a bit different. But for teaching and learning, I think anybody is capable of drawing. Second, unless they, they don't have hands or don't have steady hands. Second thing is creativity. Uh, I might be able to draw, but I'm not creative, so I don't want to get into it. So these two things stop usually people drawing. They don't feel they can draw, and they don't think they're creative. So let's do a drawing test. Uh, it's not really a test. It's fun. I'm going to show you a square. Do you have? I hope everyone here has some uh, uh, piece of paper. If you have a piece of paper or you have a tablet or a pen, okay, I want you to draw. Let me just do a pen to show. I want you to draw a square in the middle. Because we always talk about think out of box. Can you draw a square in the middle, everyone? Just get a piece of paper. Prof. Ramesh, you have a piece of paper? <laughs> okay. So just draw a square. If you have a tablet, you can draw a square in the middle of the tablet with your stylus. But if you have a piece of paper, it's good enough. And I want you to think out of the box, okay? With that square, I want you to draw anything. You can draw inside the square, but you can draw outside the square. I want you to make it into something. And once you've done that... I want you to post it to the Padlet wall. I made the link available on the chat in the YouTube, and I'll make the link available here also. Let me, let me just let me just make the link available. Uh, let me just I I just gonna okay, wait. Uh, okay, let me just get the link. I want to get the link. Where's the link? I'm going to get the link available. So one second. And keep on drawing and post. Once you finish drawing, be a bit sporty and post it to the uh, Padlet wall. Okay. I'll post the Padlet wall in the chat room here. In here, I'll post it now. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, it's in the Padlet wall. Okay. Uh, so I want you to draw anything that comes to mind into the your drawing. You can make it into anything. Just use your imagination. Let your imagination go wild from that square. I want you to draw something, anything. Let me draw something while waiting also. I'll draw something, and I will show you what I have drawn from that little square. And Let's see what you come up with. Maybe you come up with the same thing, something similar, but also it will always be unique. Okay, ah, I don't know what I'm drawing. Okay. So let's go. Okay. So when you finish your drawing, I want you, if you can, post it to the Padlet wall. Okay, let me post it again. I'll post it in the in the YouTube wall. It's coming now, the Padlet wall. The link is there, padlet.com, Z underscore. I'll show you the link here. You will see this. Let me do full screen. Sorry. Uh, okay, you will see the wall, and you see this pink button here. And then you click that one. You don't need to log in anything, and then you post it. Okay, can we try to do that? Uh, upload to the Padlet wall. And then we will look at some of your drawings. It's not about right and wrong. Where is the link to post? Oh, let me post it again. I posted three, four times. Yeah, let's just, uh, okay. So 
So just post it. It's a fun thing. Don't worry about the quality of drawing. Just try to use your imagination from the square and have fun in the process. I think very important. Huh? I'm going to stop sharing now and I'm going to share uh, just my screen. Okay. And let's go to the Padlet wall. Okay. Yes, we can see some of the drawings here now. <laughs> okay. See? Very nice. So somebody, I don't know the name because it doesn't say the name here, but somebody posted a very interesting. Uh, the square became actually an, a screen. Oh, here are some other ones. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at this. They draw. <laughs> became a fantastic uh, mountain with trees. Eh? So this is the thing about creativity is that we all have amount of creativity to play around. See, this square became a painting. You see the sun and the mountain. If you want to see for me, I just drew something very quickly. You can see here. Uh, <laughs> it is, uh, you can see, uh, okay. You can see, uh, you can see here my, I just drew something very simple. And I think that's one of the things when I talk about vision note taking, it's not about the quality of the drawing as if you're using it for teaching. It's more about as simple drawing as possible, but it allows you to communicate what you want to communicate. And 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 for at least for you, if you're doing it for yourself and if you're teaching, it's just good enough to share with you. You can see these wonderful drawings. This one, Lord Jagannath. <laughs> uh, art of note taking. Okay, I don't know this one. Uh, okay, so we have a lot of uh, interesting drawings are flowing in here. Look at this one. <laughs> Uh, let me just go here. Let me just see some of the nice drawings we have here. Uh, let me make the screen smaller. You can see uh, some of the drawings are coming up here. So just keep on posting. Uh, keep this link open. Uh, while we have some drawing activities, I hope you can post it here uh, and see some of your drawings. You can see this one here. Virtual learning is a uh, virtual is learning fun okay virtual learning is fun <laughs> just from the square right i just gave you a square and from that your imagination came flowing and i don't know from what because you didn't write i should ask you to write your name it doesn't matter but you've done a great work i hope i can i'll give a comment to the, all the drawings later after the workshop but this is just an example of the power of your imagination and and it just needs to have that freedom to to freak it so sometimes you think about drawing like legos like a piece of just a little piece so we'll get back to this uh, thing later and now I want to go back to my uh, presentation. Huh? Very good. Keep on sharing. We will go back to it. So that's the Padlet wall. So when we have drawing activities today, I want you to share your drawings on the Padlet wall uh, so we can have fun in the process. I think it's very important when you do things like something like any skill, you have to do it and you have to relax. So we have three rules, huh? three rules to remember. Uh, Prof Ramesh, please help me here. The first rule is everyone can. Uh, Prof Amul, what is that? Everyone can? Uh, everyone can draw. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll make a bit loud with some interaction like conversation. Okay, the second one is progress comes with we want us to respond. Yeah, yeah, sure. We can yeah. have a bit more conversation. Yeah, I think they will respond in the practice, progress comes with collaboration. Okay, great. So, in other words, a lot of people say they cannot draw, but one of the reasons they feel that they don't even practice. So, drawing is a skill. So, if you don't practice, don't expect results. So, as you practice, you will get better. Uh, and if you're more strategic, the better you'll get. So you can get in the, the response are uh, flowing in now, very good on the YouTube. And the third one is, which is most important, which most adults forget, is very important is, have fun. What is that? Have fun. Prof Ramesh, what is that? Have fun what? Unlimited. <laughs> have fun come on uh, it's, it's 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 just one word I, I, it's really a repetition of the first one everyone can draw have, have fun. fun drawing yes have fun drawing don't need to worry about the grammar have fun drawing so you see this is uh, if when you keep this in mind uh, it's just like a kid because i noticed that when adults draw often when i do workshops with adults they are very scared to show their drawings they draw but they're very scared to show with kids once they even they're bad or good when they draw the first thing they do look 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 uh, we must get back that childhood in us if you want to make uh, drawing an impactful. Okay, so these three rules. Huh? So thank you very much in the YouTube uh, uh, for responding. So many have responded. Very good. And all are correct. But uh, yeah, so it's the last one. Is, so, so let's just, just repeat uh, this whole next one hour. Keep in mind, everyone can draw. I'm not saying like art, Leonardo, Da Vinci and so on. That's, <laughs> that's very few can do like Mona Lisa. But uh, for teaching, learning and innovation, uh, it's really unlimited. Uh, progress comes with practice. So even if you feel that you cannot draw now, 
I can actually, if I had a chance to sit with you for one or two hours, uh, as long as you have a re reasonably steady hand, I can make sure that you can actually draw for your teaching and learning at least a, at least a few things, and then we can build upon that like Lego. And the third thing is have fun, enjoy the process. Drawing is so much fun. I don't. Some people had. I know they had some problems when they were at school. The teacher maybe didn't have a good uh, drawing art teacher, or they had some parents that say you cannot draw, you must study, or or something. They had some bad experiences. But once you get over that, it's on the way. Yeah. So this is three things. Okay. So today's agenda for the next one hour. We're going to look at six things. Drawing for learning. Okay, that's the first one. Let me just use the pointer. Drawing for learning and drawing for teaching, drawing for innovation. And then we're going to talk about note-taking methods, uh, how they interlinked, how no visual noting will work with other note-taking methods. And then uh, we're going to talk about visual note-taking. And hopefully we have time. I will show you how I draw my drawings in digital drawing, uh, what tool, why I use digital drawing for me. Uh, I prefer doing that, but you don't have to do that. That's the beauty of drawing is it, it it's so scalable because if, even if you don't have a tablet or you don't, have, you can still draw for yourself uh, to improve your thinking skills, memory skills and so on, or, and teaching skills, or, or you can have high tech. So I want to look, if you look at this drawing, you can see this drawing here. People say, oh, this is a nice, interesting drawing. Maybe they say it's not nice, but what do you see when, uh, let's try Prof. Amal. I don't think he has seen this drawing. Prof. Amal, what, what do you see when you see this drawing? There's no right and wrong because it's just a drawing. But what do you see actually? Well, I can see several things there. It looks like some alien landing on some uh, <laughs> using some spaceship. Uh, okay, Prof. Ramesh, what do you see? I can see time flying. <laughs> yeah, I can see that uh, the Baba Jed is uh, motivating. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the, you know, uh, people are jumping with joy. <laughs> okay. So anyone else? Uh, okay, Dumbledore on a UFO. So some people in the in the chat also trying to <laughs> answer. Actually, one of the things that I really ex excite me about drawing is when people uh, embed information, knowledge into the drawing. So when you sometimes when you see a drawing, it doesn't make sense to you. It just it's just nice. You got some bubbles, UFOs. But when I tell you what it is, it, be it can become a good memory for long term. Uh, that's why I was talking about it's exceptional for, for long term memory. Yeah? So if you look at this drawing, actually, it's in a funny way. What I'm trying to do is, is actually I'm trying to draw Leonardo da Vinci in a funny way. And inside the drawing, actually, I've embedded uh, many of his greatest ideas are embedded in the drawing in my own way. So, for example, if I were to give a talk about Leonardo da Vinci, I can just bring this drawing and it can remind me of some of his great inventions and, and hopefully I, I can recall more. So this is some of the powers that you can use drawing for. For example, here you can see uh, a tanks. He had, a, he had ideas about tanks 500 years ago. He had ideas about the parachute, the helicopter, the plane. Of course, he had Mona Lisa here. He loved horses. He talked about time. He talked about these cannons that uh, the barrel should... 32 at one time. He talked about smart cities, you know, and he talked about uh, this mechanical shield, like a robotic shield. He talked about mobile bridges. So all that is kind of embedded in the drawing. So this is another way of creative teaching, uh, teaching students is uh, that you can embed into drawings to make it more exciting and curious instead of just giving them the information. So this is just one example that I've embedded a lot of information in a simple drawing that looks quite innocent and fun in the beginning. But when you start looking at in depth and I, share the context it, it gets a deeper meaning okay so this is just one example of the power of drawing can be used for learning teaching and curiosity for example so let's look at learning okay so one of the things that really attracted me to uh, uh, to drawing was i was teaching learning skills and when i was teaching learning skills to students medical students specifically I kept coming back to, oh, if you want to remember something, the best way is actually to draw it out. If you want to improve your thinking skills, visual thinking and drawing is extremely powerful. And so on, it came back to drawing. And there's something called the drawing effect that I came across. You can actually Google it also. I can provide the link later. Is that they found when they did research, if people draw what they try to remember, uh, it, it's actually more memorable than just writing the words mental imagery and picture superiority. Picture superiority is when you look at a picture, mental images, you imagine the picture and writing the words. Actually, the best is to do both. That actually you combine. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, somebody there should, if it possible, can mute your mic because I can hear some noise uh, unless you want to say something. Yeah? So please mute your mic in the Zoom uh, if, if 
you have not muted. So going back to this, so that was very exciting. I found this very exciting because I was, I was at the age of 42, and then and then I found out about this drawing and I let it. At 41, I let it go. I said I don't want to learn another draw. I'm too old. But then I, it came back to me. It's so powerful for learning, per se, the impact of that. So why shouldn't I try it out? And that's one of the reasons I tried it was because it, it's such a powerful tool to improve your memory. But when I started doing research of the power of drawing, I found that it's so many things that it helps you improve. It's very good for the brain. It activates the whole brain. It's, of course, very good for ideas. We'll talk about that innovation. And if I looked at some of the best teachers in the world that I found very inspiring, most of them, they, they don't just use PowerPoint or, or other visuals. They, they usually illustrate on a whiteboard or a blackboard with chalk or a pen, marker pen or whatever. They actually do illustrate many of them. Even the top motivation speakers, when it comes to important stuff, they will illustrate live instead of just showing pictures and slides and so on. It's actually a very powerful tool to create empathy. Like, for example, if you things that you want... When you, for example, say, I don't like cockroaches, and then I start saying, okay, your task is to draw, find out more about cockroaches and draw it. As you start drawing a cockroach, you're putting so much effort in it. Suddenly, you, you might get, not feelings, but you get more empathy for things. So actually, drawing can play an impact on getting more empathy to whatever you're learning. Of course, we'll talk about note-taking, extremely powerful for note-taking. As we talked about memory, extremely powerful. And it's also very powerful to improve your thinking skills. And that's one of the things that attracted me when I was looking at Leonardo da Vinci. And I was wondering, why did he at such an 500 years ago could be so exceptional in ideas and so on? And, and until today, we're still marveled with some of the ideas. Why could he do that 500 years ago? And I think one of the reasons was he will he will combine he combined art and science and he will look at things he will look at the sea he will look at the birds the hawks and he will draw inspiration and then when he started drawing them he get a deeper understanding of the power of the different things and same with of course storytelling and this is for, for learning purposes uh, it's extremely powerful to improve your focus because when you draw your whole brain gets absorbed into it and of course clarity as a teacher you can uh, clarify complexity through drawing. So these are things that really attracted me to drawing as I did research into the drawing. So I'm gonna give you a task now, everyone. I'm gonna give you uh, one minute. Uh, there are five uh, air, or nine areas, uh, nine areas where drawing can be very helpful, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I just put number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna give you number one, of course, drawing is very powerful for art. If you look at the base, most art, whether it's sculpting or painting, usually they start with a sketch. But look at these drawings and try to put one word to each drawing in fields and areas. So try that. Because I told you number five is art. What other areas does this drawing illustrate? There's no right and wrong, but I just want to see whether you can match my idea with the drawing. So for example, what is one? What field of, is drawing very helpful? Number two, what field is it very helpful? Number three and number four. Number five, I already said art. So try your luck. Okay, let's try your luck. And also Prof. Amul and uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Ramesh, let's make it a kind of a conversational uh, webinar instead of me just talking, talking, talking. So you can take the mic if you want. If you know any of them, you don't have to know all nine, uh, which you think. There's no right and wrong here because it's a drawing. But let's see if you can match my uh, drawing with my uh, word or areas of study or, or work. Okay, anyone? Okay, so I have here, Minai says one is science. Great, that would, that's exactly match mine. Okay, a number Russian Grover says uh, technology. That's number two, okay. Uh, genetics, yeah, one can be genetics. Uh, Naina says observation, one, yes, it, it, it directly is observation, but we're looking at science, somebody said. Number two, mechanics, okay, but I was looking at technology, more generic. Number seven is memory, okay, interesting. I was thinking mm -hmm. more about the language. And, uh, number one, astrology, okay, <laughs> but it looks like a genetics there, okay, very good. Uh, we can see there's so many answers coming in. Robotics, number two, number one, mind reading, <laughs> okay. Uh, number seven, drama. It could be drama. I was looking more at language and linguistics. Okay. Uh, number four, math. Yes, number four is math. Uh, I, I mean, that's what I matched it for. Uh, number seven, visualization. Uh, could be about more looking at language. Number eight, medicine. Yes, number eight, medicine. What about number nine? Okay, we're getting all these answers coming in. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. There's a, there, there's no right and wrong here. We just see whether my drawing actually matches my, what I yeah. tried to say. And there, okay. there is one yeah. interesting uh, answer by uh, Mr. Tayyab. He says the one is far sight. <laughs> that is unique what? among them. Far sight. Which one? Number one. Uh, yeah, number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so you can see and all these answers coming up. And this is one of the things I like about drawings. It creates curiosity. Yeah. Yes. You were saying. So uh, six is mythology by Shweta and uh, uh, Shri Mat 
and says archery archery is for which one okay okay number 9 is history actually i had number 6 as history yeah number 9 i had something else some so. people okay. call number 9 as teaching teaching okay and could be yes business. it could be and even uh, business, business. Yes, exactly. That's exactly my term. Okay, I'm going to review. We can't go on forever. I mean, this we can go on for 10 minutes, but I'm just going to review. There's no right and wrong. I think the very important here is just whether you match my thought. Because sometimes my drawing might not be correct. But I, I mean, according to your mindset. So it's just a guy. Let's have fun. This is actually Seema, what I... Seema said six as uh, daunting. <laughs> don't think. Scrolled okay. up. <laughs> scrolled up. But these okay. are generic terms. So like yeah. the number one could be more genetics and so on. But uh, I'm thinking about in general terms, science, technology. Make fun. So you can see this is what uh, areas where drawing can play an impact. Like in science, of course, when, when you teach kids about different things, not just look at things. I think the difference when observing and drawing something, when you observe something, you, you, you appreciate something. But when you actually have to draw something that you have observed, you're Suddenly, you notice things that you never noticed when you observe. I think that's one of the powers of drawing in terms of science and so on. Of course, technology, you can draw the future. You can draw the future robot. You can draw the future technology. And of course, in engineering, you do a lot of sketching anyway. But engineering, so when you draw, you already have a, a, a extra strength, a competitive edge in engineering. Of course, maths, this is very interesting, the visualization of maths. I think a lot of students that struggle with maths can actually learn how to visualize it. In more creative ways. and of course art as i said actually the basis of most art my mother was an artist and i grew up actually in artist world so i was exposed to the art but i gave up at the age of 12 on any drawing and i stopped i played football and then i stopped for 30 years and then i started again at the age of 42. so and yes in art if you really understand art you notice that even when they sculpt or they paint usually they will do a sketch first so you have to have some drawing skills in history when you teach history think about asking kids to draw history have fun to draw different scenarios different maybe different technologies of the past uh, something you know so history can be much more exciting if they can storytell it and draw it out i mean there's so many things you can do with history and again with language again as I said, the drawing effect, not when you learn a word, for example, why don't you learn how to draw a simplistic drawing of, say that you learn about the horse, learn how to draw a simple drawing of the horse, very simple one. And by drawing the horse, you start learning more things about the horse. It has four legs, it has a tail. So you learn more about, you know, a bit more specific. Uh, information is still coming in. Thank you very much, everyone in the chat room. And number nine was actually medical or medicine. Uh, it's extremely powerful. I think one of the challenges in education today, when I, I worked in a medical university for seven years, and that was anatomy. And when you learn anatomy, everybody's, I see a lot of people just looking at it, trying to memorize it. There's nothing more powerful. If you're learning about muscles, about bones, about heart, about lungs, learn how to draw simplistic drawings of it. By doing that, you, you activate your whole brain. And not only can you draw many simple parts of it, when you become a doctor, when you see your patient, you don't have to draw, show the iPad. You can just take a piece of paper and illustrate some of the issues. I've had doctors do that, and that creates such a comfort in the patient that you can actually illustrate simple of the problem of the student. Uh, of the, uh, and of course, if you're a teacher, being able to teach medicine and illustrate life. I, I, I asked the students in my old university, who are the best teachers in the medical field? And, and very interesting, I went to the lectures of some of the best uh, lecturers, professors, and most of the top professors in medicine in, in my university, when and it comes to the crunch, they will take up the marker pen and they will illustrate life, whether it was a muscle or whether it was a bone or whether it was the heart. And, and they will do it, simple drawings of it. And that created such a connection between them, the expertise and the students and, and engagement and simplification. One of the things when you teach and draw is it slows down the process. You love to see step by step instead of just bolding unless you're very good with animation and of course business to illustrate your idea you have these paths so when you have your pitching for ideas not just you have slides you can show your expertise to the picture not only can you show visuals that anyone could have done you can show illustrate this is my idea this is how it works this is the flow and you can just simple illustrations it's very powerful to to connect with the, the potential investor and so on so these are just some areas i just identify nine areas where drawing is extremely powerful and again, I would like to thank everyone that participated in the chat room. Uh, so I'll show you some visual notes. Uh, this one is a done. Uh, it doesn't have to look like this. This is my visual notes. It, it can look um, better than this or worse. It doesn't matter. It, what it matters with visual notes, it, it helps you learn something, see the big picture, and also remember it and understand it. Okay. So this is just one example. Uh, I, I listened to a talk by Prof. Mushtaq. He talked about employability in the 21st century, the future-proofing your child in an uncertain world. Huh? So his talk was actually three theme or three topics, main topics, academic excellence, which all universities in the world strive for. But I mean, most 
And then, but he emphasized on emotional intelligence. He said that because of technology today, uh, they're taking over the physical for a long time ago. Robots now and, and, and artificial intelligence will take over the cognitive aspect. There's one aspect left which technology can do something about, but people still want it is the emotional part, the connection, creating that connection between people. That's why it's very important for students at universities to develop emotional intelligence. Uh, and, and also happiness. He emphasized not should you only have emotional intelligence, you should be happy. So how do they do it? They teach you gratitude. They, te they have a lot of projects here where they expose you to help people, to show gratitude and all these things. And, and of course, in terms of emotional intelligence, they, teach, they, they learn about self-management, self-awareness, social awareness, and uh, social relationship. And now when I listened to that talk, I drew this drawing. So, so for other people can benefit from, but I myself, can I can go back to this drawing and I can basically talk about it for five to 10 or 15 minutes by, by doing capturing it in a visual format. And that's some of the powers in just one page. You know, That's some of the powers that I really want to share with you and hope you can work on your own visual notes as you uh, progress in your skill. And this is another one I'm not going to go through. This is my, uh, I did a note, of course, on my, uh, my workshop on learning skills, which is called the Super MRT. But the most important in learning skills actually is to learn how to focus. I think that's one of the biggest challenges with the youth today. And then once you learn how to improve your focus, automatically actually your memory skills, reading skills, and thinking skills will improve. But I, I expose them to memory techniques. I expose them to speed reading techniques and also smart reading techniques and also thinking tools to help them to be more innovative and creative. So this is basically a summary of my workshop. So for example, they can attend my workshop and they can just go back to this drawing because by looking at this drawing the first time, it doesn't make sense. But if they attended the workshop, they captured the knowledge by going back to this drawing they can actually uh, it kind of triggers back the memories of some of the things that they learn okay this is another one i'm not going to go through this one this one is i did on active learning uh, the importance of uh, what students should do during class or during lectures or tutorials what they should do before and what they should do after and if actually they practice this they should be top top students or get top top grades but most students they the very few students actually i found from my own research prepare before they go to class and and they don't have often good strategies during class and they do very little revision until the final exam so this is very important to infuse this habit so this is just an example of active learning visual note on active learning Okay, and this is the final uh, note I want to share on uh, that inspired me. I, I always get this kind of inspiration. If I get something very insp inspirational, I will try to draw it. So this is actually, I think you know this guy. I, this is this is done in 2018, so it's not very good drawing. This is actually Professor Pant. He's very famous in in, in India on artificial intelligence and and Industry 4.0 and so on. So he taught me on computational thinking. And at that time, a few years back, it was it became as it was a discussion whether it should be a course in the university or it should be infused into the program. And I was very fascinated by computational thinking. And some universities, even in Singapore, made it a compulsory course, like National University of Singapore. But what I really liked about it is I tried to do in this simple drawing here is to simplify. He, Professor Pant, uh, he talked about computational thinking. He talked about four. Uh, phases or first stages of in the process. First is the skill. These are skills that you should, everyone should learn this, okay? Number one is decomposition, which is basically analyze. You have these complex problems and issues and challenges and you want to simplify it. So to do that, you need to analyze it, break it into pieces. And then when you break things into pieces, you, you call something called pattern recognition. You try to see patterns. And then from the patterns, you uh, simplified abstraction, you simplify it. And then in this era of technology, artificial intelligence, and so on, you have what you call algorithms, right? Rules to, to, to which you feed the, the, the artificial intelligence or the computer system or the programming language. You fill them with algorithms. So rules to make it, to make things so the artificial intelligence can automate or simplify things. So this idea of learning the skills. So like I just give an example, huh? is that uh, say face recognition, right? Uh, people, many people don't realize how the system will recognize your faces, right? They don't, they don't compare pictures, right? So what they do is uh, analyze the picture, right? So what are the patterns? So what we have, they have actually broken down the picture into numbers. Their like nose has a number, eyes, and, and, the, and the relationship with it. So everything has been simplified in terms of patterns and numbers. In other words, it'll be simplified to numbers. And from the numbers, it can search. In other words, it doesn't search the pictures it searches the numbers, which has been simplified. And that's in a process of computational thinking. I, I think I'm very quick on it now, but I just want to emphasize this skill, this mindset. I think every student should have learn about computational thinking at a very early age. And that's why I really like Prof Pant, because he's really 
pushing forward uh, this kind of thinking uh, and learning these kind of things in the student process, not just university, also schools. So this is something that you should think about, even if you forget everything I've done in this course today, is learn about computational thinking, okay? So this is an example. I, I did a drawing. I started with the same three things, noses and the circle, exactly same. I like to look at cartoons, of course, and I managed to draw with the same nose, I managed to draw three kind of famous cartoons. Okay, and you can see here, this is, uh, um, you can probably guess which character, I'm not sure if you watch Walt Disney. So this is a way to teach uh, kids pattern recognition is to look at things that they interest them. So maybe they like cartoons and try to find similar things. So you can see here, I started with the same nose. Uh, I can just, while talking, I started with the same nose, is it? And from that, I could draw three different characters. So this is something that you can teach kids like pattern recognition by simple things through drawing. Okay, I think of that. So this is just one example, fun way. Okay, and in the process, I, I started drawing uh, about four or five years ago, but I only started teaching drawing about three years ago. And you can see here, Prof Ramesh, <laughs> he has already shared this drawing. He one day surprised me and he shared some pictures of him being inspired to draw again. And he was very good at drawing in the past, but then he stopped for a while and he came back. So this is one of his uh, very nice drawings. But of course, he did want to blame me. So this is Prof Ramesh. But then after that, I started going to schools. I went to some schools, you can see here. And that time I had a workshop called Drawing for Empathy, Learning, Innovation, Growth, Health, and Teaching. And you can see him. And I was surprised. I didn't teach the kids how to draw. I went to the workshop. I was thinking about, I had to teach them how to draw. Actually, what I was doing was just teaching them, believing that they could draw anything and giving their uh, a, a, a mindset of analytical mindset, combining critical thinking with creative thinking. And they were drawing the most amazing things. You know, these are very young children, they're drawing. So what I did, sometimes I do collaborative drawing. I bring them, I give them a huge mahjong paper. Huge mahjong, this is not mahjong paper, but it's a you know, huge piece of paper. And they draw together in groups. You can see here, I go back. You can see they're drawing in groups here. You see here? They're drawing in groups. And you give them a challenge. So what their drawing was, to draw the future learning space or the future classroom. Uh, the future and then imagine you're 30 years or 20 years ahead and of course some drew <laughs> that you'll be taught by a robot i'm not sure if you're too excited about that but <laughs> but that's what they draw so they were drawing all sorts of things it was very amazing and then i start doing it with professors uh, this is from university of malaya which is ranked as the top university in malaysia uh, i went there to the workshop uh, i mean actually it was a conference and i got some of the top professors there to draw the future university our future learning space. And they imagine the time, it doesn't matter, 2058, 2068. And then this is another workshop from University of Malaya. And then I went to the top uh, private university in Malaysia, uh, Taylor's University, and I, and I exposed them to the idea to, to draw, instead of just talking about the future, draw the future and have fun. And here's a picture from the unique school in Turkey. These are actually teachers, and then they have the parents. They are also drawing uh, the imagination, the inventions, the ideas, and also the future school okay and these are students from the in turkey and this is from harriet watch i'm just sharing some pictures so you get some and they was very interesting they had a challenge they had a program i think it was empower so they they need the the top management needed ideas this was so what i did is i asked them to to draw what will the empower program look like instead of just presenting in terms of bullets on draw it out and have fun with it and you can see the engagement when they're explaining the ideas the energy they bring into it's just amazing <laughs> usually don't get that if it's just bullets okay and this is from singapore i got some uh, this is a religious school in singapore uh, we expose the drawings and they also draw the future and this is again from penang usm so these are some but last year i started introducing them to digital drawing I, i've been doing it for two and a half years but i was not comfortable confident to teach people digital drawing but now i've started to teach digital drawing not for art but for learning teaching and innovation you can see here some of the nice the amazing i did they were drawing these these three uh, uh i'm not sure they're professors doctors but they drew they didn't have a, a what do you call a stylus they actually drew their fingers and they drew the air and so amazing and and some drew the mouse which is not very good but i, I recommend if you want to draw uh, digitally, it's good to have a stylus. I mean, drawing with a mouse is very difficult. And if you want a tablet, you don't have to be an, I'm using an iPad Pro, but you don't have to have an iPad. I, the idea that you have to use a particular expensive uh, technology is not true. You, if you have a tablet, because drawing apps, there are a lot of good drawing apps on most platforms. Okay. So you can hear some of the drawings. Very funny. You know, this one, the guy could draw, but he drew an amazing tank here. 
and here they're drawing antibiotic resistance uh, if you're into medical you know so <laughs> having fun simple drawings to create that engagement okay uh, some more okay here are kids drawing the future car and and so on so this is very inspiring to me so that's what drew me to keep on doing it and that's what i'm trying to do now to 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 motivate inspire more people to draw especially academics to engage the students and so on okay so teaching so now i've talking uh, talked about for 10 minutes so now we're going to have a drawing activity okay so now for touching so now you're going to get this same drawing activity but it's a bit different i want you to afterwards if you can please post it back to the padlet i will share the padlet link in the chat room and this is your challenge i want you to draw these four items tree a house a robot and a stick figure and once you i give you Three minutes, because remember when you're drawing for teaching, you don't have to have complex drawing. A simple drawing just to create that connection to simplify and engage, okay? So what I'm going to do now is we'll get to software. Don't worry about software. I'll talk about software soon. Uh, somebody was mentioning it. So I'm going to get, let me just get the link. I will share again for those who are joining late. Let's get it. Uh, okay, let's get the link. Uh, I have okay. posted the link. You posted the link again? Okay, yes. great, great. Yes. Uh, let me post again also in case sometimes the chat is just going uh, overflowing. So, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it goes uh, quick uh, when <laughs> we receive many responses. Yeah. Okay, so, so what we do now is I give you two minutes. It's kind of your break. Your break is to draw. Okay, make it very simple. Uh, I will show you what I've drawn. Uh, I will draw also, but simple. It's not about creating a beautiful artwork, it's about simple enough so people. Get, understand what it is and even if they don't understand what is the beautiful if you're a teacher if you draw a dog and you want to draw a cat you can just say it's a cat and the students say okay it's a cat <laughs> so you don't have to be perfect but the idea is 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 is, is, is to simplify things and, and engage the students more in a more curiosity and creative way okay so try to draw these four items a tree house robot and stick figure and then uh let's go and check out the the Padlet. I'll check out the Padlet now in, in another 30 seconds. I hope everybody got what to draw. A tree, a house, a robot, and a stick. You can divide the paper into four and then draw it. Okay. So let me just go into the... Uh, let's see if there's any drawings coming in yet. I probably have to wait another few minutes. Okay. So the Padlet link. See, somebody's asking. I just... just uh, It's very funny. It just above... Uh, the Padlet link is just above. <laughs> Oh, very funny. Okay, okay. Okay. There, the paddle link is there. I, I posted it again. I hope you get it. Okay. So please share your drawings. Let's see. Uh, Prof. Amish, uh, Prof. Ramesh, can you see the paddle wall now? Oh, he's busy drawing. I can't. <laughs> uh, yes, it is visible. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. the first drawing coming in. Wow. Okay. I wish they put the name there. It would be nice. Okay, BG Koma. Did you go? That was the other one. He draw something very interesting. Yeah, let's look what he draw. He draw this. Okay, <laughs> very interesting. Uh, okay, okay. You draw a padlet wall. Okay, let's. Okay, yes, coming in. Look at this. Ah, beautiful. See, I love it. It's it. See, the thing is, the beauty of when you do, in, when you're doing a, when you're a teacher, you don't have to draw complex stuff. It's good enough. People understand. This is a tree. This is a house. This is a stick figure. And this is a robot. Very good. Oh, so many drawings coming in. You can see drawings coming in here. This one also very nice. It looks, I love this. So few lines. See, you can draw a house with just a box, a circle, and a, very nice. And then the cute little robot. Uh, and then the stick figure. Very interesting stick figure. Looks like some Egyptian stick figure. <laughs> okay. Uh, very nice. Okay, yeah. This one draws a story. Uh, this one. Chunky's notes. <laughs> so this is a story house, and you see some stick figures, and you see a tree, and you see the person right. <laughs> Uh, very nice. Okay, very good, very good. So people are sharing their drawings. Afterwards, you can go back. I'll try to comment later. I don't think I have time to comment on this. But remember, when you're using it for teaching and learning, it's not about, uh, it's just, you just need to draw good enough so it communicates what you want. So the people on the other side, the students understand what you're drawing. That's good enough. Unless you're drawing something that has to be perfect. And that's maybe in engineering or something. So you can like, look at this funny robot. But the key when you're doing for teaching is actually to draw quite fast so you don't lose the connection with the students. So think about that. Okay. Very good. Okay. I'm going to spend another 30 seconds looking at this drawing. Keep on posting them. We can go back to them later or even after the workshop. I'll have fun to look at your great. Uh, and if, if you can put your name in the comments if you want me to comment you directly. Okay. Dr. Kazia. Very nice here. You can see here. Let's look at the. 
Oh, right. See, she just threw a head. That's a stick figure. Good enough. And then we've got a house. We've got, oh, this is a stick figure. Sorry. Oh, this is the robot. Okay. <laughs> this is the tree. Okay. Quick drawings. Okay. Drawings are flowing in here. Uh, you can see, look at this. Look at how much creativity that we have formed. Fantastic. And here are some of the previous drawings. Wow, look at this. I wish we could spend the rest of the 40 minutes to look at all your great drawings, but amazing stuff. Okay, drawings are flowing in. Wow, look at this. This is the first one of the first digital drawings you have here. Let's look at this. Coming in, you can see here. Uh, drawing on the, what's it? Drawing on the iPad uh, using black background. Very nice. Okay, see here? Okay, Simple are, tree, robot, and a house. Me, Very nice. Can you please post the yeah. uh, uh, Padlet into the YouTube? public chat thank you okay okay so maybe you want to see my drawing i just i, I had to do it because i wanted to say this is simple you know i didn't I, I i don't see my drawing as fantastic it's just simple drawing you can see here let me see my camera i can see my camera so okay i can see here it's simple this is when you when you're talking about for teaching and learning is unless you're teaching art, uh, it, it doesn't have to be so complex. It's just good enough to create the idea with drawing. Sometimes it's just to engage the audience more instead of putting a tree. And let's discuss this a bit. Like for example, tree. Once you can draw a tree, what can that represent? What can a tree represent? Doesn't that just be a tree? What what can a tree represent? Hey, Prof Amul, what can a tree represent besides being a tree? Yeah, there are uh, several possibilities depending on the situation. Children come up with lots yeah. of meanings. So a tree symbolizes a forefather. A tree symbolizes uh, greenery and uh, richness. A tree symbolizes nature. Lots of uh, possibilities. Great. So, you, yeah, it can be growth. So in other words, the, when once you if you can use, for example, a tree in, in illustration, you can use it to communicates much more than just being writing the word tree. Said, what about a house, uh, Prof. Amish, uh, Prof. Ramesh? What about a house? What can it represent besides being a house? Oh, anyone else? What a house? I mean, you it have could, answers it could here coming be security, in. it could be family, relationship, shelter, uh, love. Yes, there's a lot of things. Huh? We've got, we got a lot of coming in here. They, they were saying, but it appears growth, stability, environment. We're talking about the tree, nature, life, environment. Tree symbolizes life cycle. See here, things are coming in uh, and so on. And then in terms of uh, house, uh, okay, the, the safety, life, all right? And then let's look at the, uh, the, for example, the third one, the robot. What could a robot represent? Uh, so here we've got fertility. I mean, that's going back to the house. And so what about, about the robot? What can a robot represent? Robot can represent artificial intelligence that is upcoming. Okay, Kezia, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, it could be artificial intelligence. It could be industry 4.0. It can be automation. It can mean so many things. So that's the idea with with the drawing. Something can it can bring about so many ideas. You can see the the chat room is bombarding now. They're going. They're talking about the the house from nature, peace, science, and now we've got the data structure. They talk about. Huh? So it's a lot of things. And then the last one, a stick figure is up to you. What you want to draw a stick figure. Stick figures are very powerful for storytelling and, uh, and and communicating and having fun in the process. You don't have to draw a full-blown nice uh, sketch and so on. You can just, with a simple stick figure, you can do a lot of storytelling and, and creating emotions and so on with that. So I, the chat room is still going bursting with, uh, with ideas and the drawings are coming in. This is amazing. Eh? We have, it's like uh, uh, we have a lot to look after, okay? So that's the tree and house, okay? So have fun, keep on drawing uh, this thing and share it. Uh, we, we will go back. I will definitely go back to after the workshop and give feedback, but at this moment it's tough. So this is things with, when you can illustrate live or even in your slides, a drawing can sometimes bring about more than just what it is if it's just a word, okay? Okay, so these are some examples I want to share with you. This is uh, Miss Diana Morgan. What she would do is she would, she would, uh, in the morning, spend five to 20 minutes, depending on how many colors. Of course, she can draw. So this is, uh, very, uh, 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 it's not easy, but you don't have to be uh, a good drawing, but this is just an example. So as far as she has Mad Monday, but what I like about what she does in the morning is she will ask a question. For example, here, how would you survive the zombie apocalypse, right? Or, and then the students will go on the whiteboard and write it, okay? This is low tech. 
but it is still powerful. And you can do it with high tech. Of course, you have Jamboard, you have technology. But the idea is to, to get people to participate in, in creative ways, okay? And so you have, she had all these, every day will be a special day to, to, to awaken the tide, make it engaged and interesting. Uh, this is another one. Uh, what he will do, he will draw actually the, on a chalk. He's using a chalk, okay? He, he'll draw anatomy. He'll draw the, the, he has the skeleton. And, and, but what I like about his approach is, is that he will draw, but he will demand that students also have to draw what he is drawing. And that en encourages to really learn anatomy. Not only can they uh, say it, not only can they write it, they can actually illustrate it. And I think to me, if you ask me, if I was running a medical university today, I, that would be a requirement for me for all doctors to be able to s illustrate simple, not everything, but s at least the most essential things uh, they can do. Because the moment they can do that, they can easily teach it, uh, whether it's to the student or even to the patient. So this becomes a very uh, competition. I think. अपने YouTube को दो जगह खोल रखा है टैब में और अपने लैपटॉप पे मैं मैसेज पोस्ट कर रहा हूँ मुझे दिख रहा है but publicly नहीं जा रहा है. Okay, okay, yeah, promise. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And this is uh, Dr. Najib lectures. Uh, and this is another thing when you can illustrate uh, live. I mean, let me talk about live now. You can you can see here very uh, simple drawings. Actually, it looks very complex. But if you look at the lines, it's very simple. But he has mastered the art of of, of drawing anything. Actually, he's got hundreds and hundreds of, of lectures. And you can see here. Uh, Prof. Ramesh, can you please mute your phone? I mean, your, uh, your mic. Uh, uh, okay, mm -hmm. so you can see here, this is an example of Dr. Najib lectures. So in other words, uh, if... So if you can actually, you can actually... So this is an easy way, you talk about e-learning. Uh, some people now do all these sophisticated animations, so that's mm -hmm. fine. But actually one of the easiest way to do with good professors that, that don't want to touch technology is simply just to video record them doing what they're best, whether it's the chalk or the whiteboard. So this is just an example of... Uh, how drawing can help you to be more dynamic in terms of teaching. Okay, so in other words, well, in terms of teaching, uh, it's a very powerful tool to engage, uh, to simplify and inspire. So these are things that you can use drawing for as a teacher. Okay, and now we talk about innovation. We talk about teaching, learning, and now about innovation. Okay. Okay. Can you guess who, who drew this or not? Can you guess who drew this? Anyone? Who drew this? That's Leonardo da Vinci. Okay. Okay, pro okay, done. So who drew this? Uh, this is actually one of the famous drawings of? Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, the Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, he drew this, he had an idea of what an hel helicopter might uh, look like or a flying vehicle. So I think this is very important when you talk about, um, you have a lot of ideas in your head. It's of course good to write down your ideas, but sometimes you have ideas that cannot be put into words. I mean, and that's where drawing. And one thing about great ideas that we know from research is that great ideas don't come suddenly. Uh, we, have, we watched the apple drop on his head and all that Newton, but actually great ideas is over a longer process. And the more you can bring it out on paper in, in scribbles and so on and test your ideas with people, the more you can work and fine tune your ideas. And that's one of the things, again, drawing becomes very powerful because you can illustrate quickly, sketches, scribble, and then keep on improving them and sharing them. And sometimes it takes a long time to reach your, uh, uh, what do you call it, to, to reach the, the perfect idea. And that's where scribbling comes very powerful. I, I, I give an example, uh, like for example, Pixar. Uh, Pixar is an example when they, like Toy Story, the movie. Now, when we watch the cartoon or the animation, we are so amazed with the stories. But sometimes they're, when they do what they call it uh, storyboarding, they will go through like one scene sometimes goes through hundreds of iterations, hundreds of focus groups. So this is, but they have to go repetition and then they sketch out and then they try again before they start building the animation. And this idea that it goes through a long process of many, many iterations is very important. And this again is, is where simple low tech uh, storyboarding and scribbling becomes very powerful. And this is an example of, uh, I was inspired a few years back, everyone was talking about Industry 4.0. And I think education needs to focus beyond Industry 4.0. And I had fun illustrating Industry 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
maybe we can have a bit of a guessing game here. When you think about industry one, two, three, can you see a trend in this drawing? What is actually one of the big trends in when you talk about industry one, two, three, four? And I think education needs to, to, to think about this more is, is in terms of this uh, drawing. Can you, can, you, can you see any particular trend there? Kezia, maybe I ask Kezia. <laughs> By looking at the drawing, can you see any particular trend? Um, I tried to illustrate it quite interesting. If you look at industry one, industry 2.0, industry 3.0, industry 4.0, there's something that there's a trend that we, we, we don't need to be fortune tellers. We know it's going to happen. Uh, yes, that, that is the trend that is upcoming. And because the, the scientists were now trying to develop uh, robots that can assist further in the uh, harnessing the artificial intelligence. So, because that will be integrated in the industrial revolution. So this is what I can sum up from the pictures. Okay, so that's great, that's great. But the way I'm trying to, that's that's definitely artificial intelligence is creating and the technology. But what is interesting is if you look back at, especially industry, uh, if you see that it was more people, that's why I, I highlight the red, you see this, this guy here? <laughs> So when you go, you see, it becomes less and less people doing the same kind of thing. So you see, there's two guys, like a game, right? Two, and then three missing, and then four. And this is something that we, we, we got, some industries are going to disappear. I mean, in terms of uh, requiring people, some are going to be less. And these are some things that are not so, are foreseeable. And I think that's where education needs to, to take into mind. So if that's the case, uh, we need to think about beyond technical knowledge also we need to focus much more on the soft skills or, the, or essential skills like leadership thinking skills creativity and all it becomes much more essential because we don't really know exactly what's going to be automated but we know many other things are going to be automated so that's what i'm trying so then i, I had fun drawing education 1.1 1 .1, uh, education 2. so i had fun so i thought can you for fun anyone can guess here one word what would if if, if you would put one word on education 5.0 what word will that be? Or one or two words? Can you try to, I mean, for you, there's no right and wrong here. I, I couldn't find a particular word. I tried to draw it out, what the future education would be in a funny way. But one word, can you find, think of one word that will describe the future of education, education 5.0, what we should strive towards building the students. I know values become extremely important in this era with, with technology become so powerful. But one is, can you think of one word? There's no right and wrong. If you don't know, it's okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be Kaiser, it can be Prof Ramesh, it can be Prof Amor. Is there any one word that comes to mind when you think about beyond 4.0? Uh, I would say visualization. Visualization. Yeah. Okay, great. That's, there's no right and wrong. I, I, this is just create that discussion. Okay, well, anyone else? Visualization? Okay, great. Uh, creativity, i.e. Oh, here I got things. Uh, edutech, learning, exploration, innovation. So collaboration. There's, there's a lot of ideas popping in. Sustainability. Uh, this one, Iskon Guru Gram. Sustainability. That's actually what I was thinking of. I didn't put it because I'm not sure, but I was thinking one of the key things is not just enough to be creative, innovative. You have to think about nature. You have to think about people. So you have to think about how when I create an innovation or invention, it has to be sustaining the world as it is. It's not enough just to create money and value. You have to also think about the society and so on. So this, this is a different mindset because now it's a bit very much about creativity and innovation. But slowly and now you can see the last five, six years is about sustain. It's not good enough. Just You have to be a you have to have ideas that will help the world, not just make money or, or just be a great idea that can create value. It has to go beyond that. It has to be something that helps nature and, and doesn't destroy nature and so on. And that's where, for example, sustainability. Also. This is just an example of uh, some of the drawings. Okay. And again, uh, the beauty of drawing is the mix of art and science, the fusion of art and science to help you to develop critical thinking, creative thinking, inventive thinking, innovative thinking, collaborative thinking, and computational thinking. So this is where... Uh, drawing can play a significant role in terms of uh, innovation. It combines the art and science together, it fuses it together. Okay, so we have covered now the, the learning tech. Uh, we're going to go into visual note taking and note taking. 
so this is what I tried to say, I tried to explain for the last uh, 30 minutes is learning, uh, drawing is extremely powerful to improve your focus, to improve your memory and in thinking skills. So that's where drawing can play a critical role, especially for students. And, and for teachers, uh, educators, uh, it's an extremely powerful to engage and connect the audience. You can see here in the chat room has been quite active, alhamdulillah. And also to simplify. Sometimes you have complex things. Sometimes a simple illustration can simplify things. And hopefully in the process, you can inspire someone. And the last one is for innovation. It's next. We have a lot of ideas and so on. And sometimes we cannot put words to it. This is where visualization comes in. And if you can draw, it's, it's usually a bit easier to visualize, especially if you want to do something quickly. If not, you can use all the technology. But the simplest way is sometimes just to pick up a pen and illustrate and bring to life your imagination and ideas. And as I showed in the pictures, it's a lot of fun. I, I think I've never had so much fun in workshops when, when people are actually drawing out their ideas because they're thinking about their drawing. It brings to life. And one of the key things in innovation and creativity is that you need to be relaxed. You need to have fun. That's when your mind is most enjoyable. And that's where uh, drawing can play a role. Okay, we talk about note-taking, okay? I'm going to skip this, but draw, uh, one thing about using your hands uh, is very important in the learning process. And, and the idea that students don't take notes during class or during the learning is, is, is very sad if, this, if some do. Note taking is an important skill to learn, not only for your studies, but for life. When you start working, you want to listen to your boss, you listen to experts, you go to events, you need to take notes and that's very powerful. Okay, uh, so here are some different note taking methods. I think the, if you look first here, the first thing is to capture. Unless you're an expert, you go to talks, lectures, webinars, and also you take notes from your research. But the problem is if you don't take notes, uh, just let's put this in context. Say that you have a subject, right? You have a subject, uh, maybe a subject will have about 500 to 1,000 pages, say it be traditional. So you have your book, you have your articles, you have uh, reading material and so on. That's, so that's a lot of materials. So you need to take notes unless you want to kill yourself before the exam because if you have five subjects, right? So this is where note-taking comes important. And I've identified a few here. There are many note-taking methods, but the basic ones that people do, besides just writing paragraphs, the outline, just take bullets, charting method. Uh, this is very popular medical when you do categorization and relationship. Cornell method, which we'll talk about. And the, the one that I found that most students do is they print out the slides or they have the digital PDF and they write on it, which is okay. They take notes. But the problem with all this is from 500 to say 500 pages, you're stuck with still about 50 to 100 pages of notes. And if you have five subjects, we're talking about 500 pages of notes to revise. And this is where, for example, mind mapping becomes very powerful. Mind mapping, instead of having 10 pages, you can mind map and then you have all the key concepts and it maps out and you have it very nicely for research. But there's something that, uh, my map is visual also, but the visuals are half hard. Okay, you can put pictures. Even Tony Bozan, they have pictures, but they're not emphasizing too much on the drawings. But there's something called uh, a bit more visual note-taking is where, uh, which I don't recommend for all notes, but for the what you really want. For example, I'm a teacher. I'm teaching a lecture. I maybe have 30 slides, right? But there's something in that lecture I want everyone to know. I even if they forget everything of my lecture, this is something they must know. If you ask me, that is the thing that you should visualize uh, either through storytelling or in, in visuals or whatever. But that is something that you must connect with the students. Because sometimes you have a lecture, you have 50 slides. And to be honest, reality is students might not remember anything after the lecture or they remember something. But what you should try to do always is there's something in your lecture that it should be unforgettable. And that is where you need to transform it. And, and that's where visual note taking can become extremely powerful for teaching okay so i'm just going to share with you a few methods we have the cornell method uh, how many of you know about the call can you just say yes uh, i've used the cornell method before okay this is the cornell method i'll show examples huh? so in the cornell method uh uh kezia have you used the cornell method before in taking notes kezia uh, kezia uh yes hello uh, uh, um, yes um, Unlike the corn, the corn method. Uh, have you tried that before? Taking notes when you take notes. Uh, no, not the corn method. Um, mine is simply normally traditional way, but oh, um, okay. Yeah, the key the key point is always to note what is most important in a presentation okay. lecture, and then you just put your key points. Then when you go back and memorize and read the key points will lead you to much more what you can remember. So that's how I, 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 awesome. I do. 
That's very good. Very good. Okay, so I'm just going to share with you quickly what the Cornell method is. You can th these things are available online. So I'm what I'm trying to do now is to, I'm going to visual note taking, but I just want to spend a few minutes just so that you know that all the methods. I think visual noting is something cannot be standalone. You need to do something detailed notes, and then you have something to visualize. So Cornell method is one method. Uh, what you do is when you take notes, uh, you divide the paper into three. Uh, so you have uh, here, okay, topic title of course. This area here is where you you take notes. You take the main notes in class. So you probably have to prepare the paper in advance. And and while you're taking notes, uh, you can extract the main ideas, keywords, and key questions on this side. So you, in other words, the idea of the call method is that you provide space to extract your keywords and and main ideas and questions here. And then you provide space on the end of the piece of paper that you summarize what you have learned. Now, the beauty of this method is that sometimes the lecture will talk and you, you have fill up the whole page and then you say, oh, I'm going to add something and then you don't have space. So this year, you always have this extra space to, to act, extract uh, the keywords and ideas and information. And what I like about it is that when you are revising, what you can do is you can cover this area and then you can you have the main ideas, keywords, and you can just say it to yourself. And then you can ask yourself, and if you don't remember, then you can go back to the detail notes. Or you can do the opposite. You can read the detail notes, and you can ask you what are the key concepts. So it's actually a very strategic way to take notes. Uh, let's just see some examples. I don't have, because of time factor, I can't spend too much time on this. But these are just some examples of uh, Cornell methods. So here you can see the detail notes taken either during class or when they're doing their research. And then they hear this person put the questions and here they put the keywords you can see and then they summarize and sometimes you don't have to summarize every page but it's just a strategic way to take detailed notes okay uh, the charting method is uh, very popular medical but this is only relevant when you categorize information huh? uh, sorry I'm going a bit fast here because the whole topic is visual note taking but I'm just sharing the relationship huh? the charting method is very useful when information is categorized and it's important to know the relationship so for example here, I have an example here. I have the three methods, right? I have the description, I have when, the pros, the cons, and hows can help you decide which method that you should use for taking notes, right? So the, the, the charting method is to break down uh, information that are categorized and then see the relationship. You can see, the, the, like for example here, pros, the relationship of the pros of the Cornell charting and so on. So this is very popular in medical school. So this is just an example here. In, med in medicine, for example, drug categories, you have stimulants, depressants, hallucinogenic <laughs> categories. Then you have examples, short-term effects, long-term effects, and if you have some comments. So this is really an example of charting method. Charting method is only useful when it's categorization and the relationship, okay? And then we talk about the mapping. Uh, most people know mind mapping, but you don't have to use mind mapping. It could be just you're mapping out what you have learned, okay? So you can see here, uh, this is not like Tony Bozan's mind map, because Tony Bozan I think, is always in the middle, right? So it doesn't have to be so uh, fixed. But what I like about mind mapping is it really forces you to extract the key concepts and it allows you to see the big picture and see how different topics are related to each other, which is extremely powerful, okay? So this is with the mapping method. So all these are very good. And I think uh, if you ask me, uh, when I was a student, I went from a B student to an A student by just using uh, mapping or mind mapping and uh, converting my information into acronyms and so on. That was all. So actually, mind mapping is extremely powerful to make sense of a lot of information and extract it. But sometimes you still need the detailed notes, OK? So these are. So, so this is an example. Uh, I will share with you uh, later. There's a lot of tools now, online tools that you can do mind mapping, mind master. But there's also this one, visual understanding environment. I, I'll provide the links out to Prof Ramesh and, and also I will share the links. There's a lot of tools that you can uh, develop mind map digitally. Okay. So the benefits, of course, the benefits uh, in terms of collaboration, productivity, and creativity and planning. So this is just an example. But this is more like a flow. So I think one of the things that I struggle with 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 Tony Bozan mind mapping was that his method was was very beautiful, but it's very fixed. Like usually they will say you have to start in the middle and so on. But it's a very powerful tool to bring things together. Okay. So these are methods. Very good. So what visual note taking is? Uh, one of the things I struggle with with visual note taking was how to make it relevant to teachers and students. How do we make it relevant? Okay. Now, because if you do visual note taking, it's time consuming. 
uh, it's very difficult to make it relevant for detailed information. In other words, you still need, why, why, why I'm saying this is you still need a note-taking method to capture the detailed information, including maybe mind mapping. But visual note-taking is like an icing on the cake. It's like, this is where you want to visualize and, and simplify and engage and make it so memorable that not only do you remember it for the exam, you remember it for life, hopefully. And then you can have that visual note. Instead of having 30, 40 pages of notes, you just have this one note. You look at it and the, the, I, whatever you learn just comes back to you like, like, like water. And this is where I discovered myself for the last few years when I do my visual notes, I can just look at my visual note. And it's there. It's, I can just talk about it or think about it for for. I can give a. I can have a one vision on. I can give a one hour talk on it. But just looking back, the the memories start triggering back, and that is 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 where uh, I hope to help you. And if you can see here, this is the drawing that you see for the workshop, is where visual note taking is so powerful, right? It's extremely powerful for learning, which we talked about. For teachers, they can use it as a tool to teach. Uh, it, you know, it's a very powerful for teach, which I'm doing now. I'm showing you how to teach with a visual note. And it's also extremely powerful for problem solving, or you want to talk about the uh, ideas about the future. And one of the reasons why visual note taking is so powerful is it applies the dual coding theory. The dual coding theory is combining words and visuals together. Makes it very powerful. It improves the retention, and it's very personalized. Uh, there's, there's an issue here. There are tools out there that do the visual note-taking for you. They make it very beautiful cartoons. and so on. Yes, but I always say the most powerful visual note is the one that you take yourself. It doesn't have to be a beautiful drawing. Remember, your imagination can make your... Like, for example, see this simple spaceship? I can make my imagine make this believe like it's a Star Wars spaceship. So don't worry about your vision notes not looking good. What matters is that the vision notes helps you trigger that what you have learned and make it more memorable and, and also simplify it. So that's where it's really powerful, okay? So vision note, that's where the vision notes. So taking your own vision notes is always in the long run more powerful and it can help you in so many ways besides just learning. It can help you to become a better teacher and solve problems. So in other words, we talk about superiority effect because it's, it's visual, right? And it activates the whole brain. In the process, when you do visual note-taking, you always have that creative mindset on you, right? Because you think about how can I visualize, visualize this? How can I visualize this? How can I visualize this? Your mind is always in that creative mindset. That's why not only are you learning the subject, you're taking notes, you are developing a creative mindset by just taking notes. And that's where visual note-taking becomes very exciting because you're creating that creative mindset by taking notes sometimes of just of existing information okay so we talk about how to do it you can use paper and pencil uh you can use a whiteboard if you're doing problem solving with a large group or you can use an ipad and stylus okay uh, i'm rushing a bit because here's some examples uh, this is me doing a, a written i mean with a pen uh, you can use paper uh, pencil also but i prefer using pen uh, this is uh, when we did group discussions. See, they're talking, this is an amazing drawing about the future of education. So, it, of course, it doesn't make sense to you. But what is key when you do collaborative drawing is you the drawing might not make sense to you. But, of course, whoever drew it, the group or the representatives of the group should present it. Then you get an idea. So, these are drawings, examples of drawings. The group will present. Okay, for STEAM, we're talking about STEAM. I'm going to skip this. So, these are just some more examples of my own visual drawings, okay, on different e-learning trends, okay, uh, on disruptive technology. Uh, and this one I did for fun. Look how simple the drawings are. These are just normal stick figures. But I, I actually prepare this as a good tool. If I'm doing an interview, for example, I'm working in a company, I could ask the students survival skills. I can ask him, say, can you think? And the student says, yes, okay. And then you sh show me evidence that you can think in your studies. Can you write? Show me evidence. Can you draw and visualize, illustrate? Yes. Can you code? Can you communicate? Can you present? Can you lead? Can you collaborate? Can you plan? Can you build stuff? Okay, so this is just an example of, of simple stick figures can create that process of uh, what are the survival skills for a student in the future to be very central. Uh, and, and the difference between visionary and leadership. Vision leadership is not just you provide bullets, but you illustrate, you, you actually paint a picture in the in the learner or the your staff's mind of what the future might look like. It doesn't have to be drawn. If you can picture that by words is good enough, but sometimes you need to have a visual to, to, to show your vision. Okay. Okay. So now we, I'm sure I'm rushing a bit. I realize I probably needed two hours. So now how do you get started? How do you develop a visual note? Uh, so I'm going to share with you uh, how I do it digitally, and then I'm going to show you the tool. Okay. So 
keep in mind when you do visual note taking is, uh, are you doing it for yourself? It can, it can be very simple. But if you want to present it to the world, probably want to make it a bit nicer. It's up to you, okay, for educates and everyone. But the person here is to visualize it. So in other words, if you're doing it for yourself, it can be very simple. But if you want to do it for the world, maybe you want to figure out techniques to make it nicer. Uh, so uh, as we talked about, it can be from lectures or just be from contents, okay? So this is the process that I use. After two years, I mean, you don't have to follow this, but this is what I usually do is when I want to visualize, the first thing I do is to capture. There's no point drawing stuff unless, unless you're doing uh, problem solving. If, if you have content, if you're preparing your class content or your lecture notes, you first capture the key concept, keywords that you want to visualize. Don't, don't worry about the drawing first. What is it that you want to visualize? Is it a theory? Is it a process? Is it a model? Capture all the keywords that you want to be in your drawing. Then you think about the layout and then the header, the keywords, and then the visuals, and then how to connect them together. So just show an example. So here, before I even think about I want to capture. So say that I, I want to capture. So I realize I only have four concepts that I need to to visualize in the layout. So here's an example of, I divide the piece of paper to four areas of where I want to put the keywords that I want to do, okay? So then I know much, how much space I have to draw on each uh, area. And then I put in the header, for example, I put in the header. Then I add the keywords in a creative way. If it can be in the form of an acronym also, it's very powerful. So here's the ARCS uh, model to motivate learning, attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction. And then I think about the visualization, create the visuals. You don't have to necessarily draw them. If you have clip art, you can also use clip art. That's up to you. But if you want to draw them, it's better. I can teach you how to draw if that's an issue. And then I, I, I connect it. Sometimes it doesn't work that strategically. But if you talk about efficiency, I find this method more efficient, this process. But it doesn't always work like that. But this is the most efficient way that I found when I create visual notes. Okay. So layouts, what I like about visual note taking is it doesn't have to look like a mind map. You can have, you can divide the page into two. You can use the popcorn method. This is the pop. Sometimes your information is not structured and that's where uh, you just, that's why I call the pop-up method. You might put points here. They're not connected, but these are good uh, points. For example, the popcorn method. Maybe people are telling stories and then good lessons from each story. They're not necessarily connected, but you want to capture it. So they're different layouts. Sorry, oh, sorry. Uh, I don't know. Let's go back to the layout. Uh... Okay. Okay, so different layouts you can see here, sorry. You can see different layouts, okay? So there are many ways on how to uh, present your, your information. That's why I like about visual noting. It's very flexible in that sense. These are just examples. You can do it any way you want. The most important when you have visual noting is that there's a route, you know, where you are going. So here are some examples that I've done. Uh, this is the importance of in students, not just knowledge, attitudes, and skills, but they also need to develop uh, habits. Very important. Uh, this is another example. I'm just going to show you gamification and life. I'm just showing you quickly some examples that are done because I want to get into uh, uh, the digital part. I think a lot of people came on how I do it digitally. And of course, when you talk about pictures and drawing, uh, is anybody can learn how to draw if they simplify and strategically draw from memory. So this is very important. So if you want to learn how to draw, uh, maybe you can do, if you're interested in this, I can actually do another workshop where I actually, we go in and just focus on drawing. I teach you how to, for, 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 to, to draw anything you want. It's really about repetition and, and learning how to strategically draw things. Uh, and, and, and I call it linographic memory. Okay, so, you, so don't worry. If you say, I can't draw a heart, I can't draw a, a liver or a, a muscle or a car, Trust me, with a bit of practice, you can, with a bit of repetition, with a deliberate practice, okay? So I've been talking another 20 minutes. Let's have some fun. And the last drawing test for now, we don't have time. I want you to choose one of these words and try to draw them and share it in the Padlet link. Uh, if you don't like any of these words, think about something in your teaching and learning that you would like to draw and just try to draw it, scribble it, and share it in there, okay? share it in the Padlet. And in the next two minutes, three minutes, I will actually uh, share how I do it digitally and why, uh, okay? So these are words, how would you draw idea, for example? How would you draw risk? There's no right and wrong, remember, but you need to visualize in your own way how to draw time, 
how to draw target, how to draw balance, how to draw teamwork, and how to draw roadmap, for example, or have a break. Try it, just try. Okay? But because of time, uh, I'm going to just, uh, we're actually running out of time. <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay. So what we're going to do is, this is just an example of, uh, of me drawing this simple thing. There's no right and wrong. I dare just draw a bulb. You can see, I like this danger. Simple, just draw uh, a, a C and then a shark coming. Okay. So these are just simple ways of, so this is what you can think about. What you need to do is, if you're a teacher and you want to draw something in class, you just need to focus on the items that are relevant to what you are teaching. So in other words, you don't need to be able to draw everything. You just need to be able to draw what is relevant to your teaching and learning. So in other words, you can identify. So the best way is to start identify things that you would love to illustrate live in class to engage the audience and simplify things, or even just visuals for your slides also. So this is just an example of a visual alphabet, okay? Okay, so many things that you can do to make it more memorable. Okay, I'm not gonna go through this, but uh, smash in scope, uh, activate the sensors in your illustration movement, associate what people learn. Okay, I'm not gonna skip this. Humor, if you can make it funny, it becomes memorable. Imagination, using number, symbolism, color, order, positive, and exaggeration. These are things that you can do to, to, to make it what? More, your images, your visuals more memorable. Okay. So this is just an example I did. I was, I was attending this amazing lecture. I was really amazed. This was such an amazing lecture. And he talked about, this is his slide, by the way. Actually, it's, he's an amazing presenter. He was talking about the six, 16 core values of Malaysian education. And this is how he presented it. And I was thinking that it's okay, but how could I visualize that? So I, I, even during his talk, I started visualizing it. And then I went back and this is what I came up with. Uh, so what I did is I took each word and I just used stick figures and I visualized the 16 core values of Malaysian education. These are 16 core values that we want every single student to have when they graduate, whether it's school or university. They have compassion, self-reliance, humility, blah, 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 justice, freedom, courage, honesty, and so on. Spiritness, rationality. So then I visualized them. So this is just a simple example uh, of, of, of visualizing keywords and, and make, trying to make it more memorable, uh, okay? Okay, so we're supposed to have a challenge, but we're gonna skip that. This can be your homework. It's actually visual, you can take a screenshot of this. It's actually, I, I would have given you this challenge and I wanted you to create a visual note of this 181 words and you want to limit it to about seven keywords or less. Okay, but we have to skip that. So what I'm gonna do now is digital drawing. So somebody here was asking, how do I do digital drawing? Okay, uh, Salman Khan is a good example of he uses that to illustrate when he teaches. Uh, okay, so, I'm gonna so you could use this. This is a, the, if you're using a computer, you can buy what you call it, a, uh, what do you call it, a drawing board. I don't have it here, but this is the cheapest solution if you just have a notebook. Uh, it, it costs about, uh, in Malaysia, it will cost about 30 US dollars, about 20, 30, you can buy online. You can buy this and you can draw and then it will illustrate on your computer, okay? These are different drawing tools. Uh, this one is very popular among the Apple, is Taiya Su Sketches School. Uh, you can use Procreate. You can use PowerPoint, can draw, some, but not so good. Keynote, a lot of people use Keynote to draw, especially on the tablet. Uh, but what I use is Autodesk Sketchbook, this one here. I use this one. This one, the reason I use it, I don't know what the reason is why I use it, but I still use it. But what I found, Autodesk Sketchbook, it's free. It can run on Apple products. It can run on Android products. It can run on Microsoft products. So Autodesk Sketchbook is a free tool. Uh, you can just Google Autodesk Sketchbook. I'll provide the link in there. So let's just show why digital drawing can help you, okay? So this is Autodesk Sketchbook. Uh, give me, for promise, two, three more minutes. So this is one thing. Some people say they cannot draw, right? I don't have a steady arm. I don't have a steady hand. So this is what, uh, this is freehand using the tablet, using iPad tablet. But you can see here with, with here, predictive stroke, the tool, it will straighten out your lines. So if you have an unsteady arm, it will make things much smoother and flow. So you don't need to worry about that, okay? Second thing is tracing. A lot of people do tracing now, but uh, of course you have to create another layer, but tracing is also a good way if, you if you're lost for creativity, you can create things by just tracing. 
uh, of course, you have to worry about copyright, but you can be creative about it. For example, here, uh, I needed to have a globe, my own globe. I wanted to color it. So here, and then for fun, I wanted to create a face to make it interesting. So, so you can actually, from something that you trace, you can still be original. You can still be original uh, in using existing things, okay? Uh, sometimes you want to have a perfect body or something for anatomy. So coloring, that's very useful. Uh, I used to hate coloring, but when I use digital drawing, I, it's so easy to color. You don't run out of ink and so on. So that's another thing that, and you have a lot of pens and pencils and so on uh, and different uh, things they can do. So this is just an example of how coloring can be very impactful. Okay. And layers, of course, when you draw digitally, you have layers, allows you to move stuff and put thing at the front, at the back and so on which makes it very easy. I think so, that's one of the challenge when you draw traditional is that, oh, I should have put this at the back. I should have made this bigger. I should have made this smaller. But digital drawing, uh, if you use layers, it makes it very easy for you, okay? And the final is symmetry. When you use symmetry, it empowers you to draw one side, other side. You can draw things fast, especially if we talk about engineering and technology. Here's me illustrating Darth Vader very quickly. You can see I draw one side and it draws automatically the other side. And you can do multiple symmetry, and this is just a double symmetry. And you can see here an example of uh, drawing Darth Vader's face. Okay. And then you can draw different designs and so on. Okay. Okay. Uh, this has been very intensive. Uh, I'm, I'm going to end now. Uh, we can do, why don't we do 10 minutes Q&A and maybe Prof. Ramesh can jump in. Uh, but this is basically what I've tried today is, is to excite you about learning for teaching and innovation. Uh, I've illustrated you about, we have done some drawing exercises. I wish we could do more of that, but I had, I probably had so much things to share with you. I'm so excited that, that that's not the issue, but I had so many things to share with you today and, and so little time because I'm probably, I'm not sure how many of you I will see again. So that's sometimes you just want to share as much as possible, but I hope that the most important thing you, you got from this session is that drawing is extremely powerful for learning. It's extremely powerful for, as a teacher to illustrate and visualize and simplify. And it's also extremely powerful for uh, innovation, to be creative and so on. And, and this is the drawing I did on vision note taking. Uh, and that's all I want to cover. And we talked about the process, the six process, but I think most important is that vision note taking is a tool that you can use. And importantly, you don't have to be able to draw. If you don't want to draw at all, you can still visualize your content in creative ways. But I hope today that I excited you more about it and I wish you the best. And hopefully if you want to have another session where I just draw and we draw together using a tablet, we can. But that's basically what I wanted to say today. And thank you very much. And I, I will look at the chat, uh, chat room for questions. And Prof. Ramesh, maybe you want to say something while the questions are being asked. Yeah, OK. Thank you, Jed. Uh, it's, I, I will it's share the nice. link while you talk. I will share the link while you talk in the chat room. The, yes, I have the links I have, on the, I have sent you one message in your uh, uh, in the chat, chat box. Yeah, okay. if you can kindly post it into the, uh, the YouTube in chat the YouTube. also. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let me stop the sharing so friends, now. Let uh, me stop the... uh, if there are any questions, uh, kindly go ahead. You can type it and uh, either into the yeah. uh, means perhaps uh, oh, okay from YouTube. You can type it into the YouTube chat box, and from there we will read it out. Thank you. Okay. So meanwhile, there has been one question which I can uh, share with you. Yeah, please. Yeah, sure, sure. Right. Rashmi yeah, Grover okay, okay. wants to know. Do you see any risk of students becoming over dependent on visual representation and thus losing skills on detailed writing? Oh, yes. I, I think, uh, yes, if it's too, I think, uh, let's just look at, uh, just look at Leonardo da Vinci. He would do both. He would draw and explain in details because drawing cannot explain in detail. Drawing is just to give you sometimes a big picture or something to get a greater idea to simplify, but still, I always still recommend to write a lot. I think both are extremely important. Writing is very powerful because when you read something like a text, it, it, it awakens your imagination. So both are very important. But I think when you talk about to communicate something, like if I'm an inventor and I want to communicate my idea to somebody that wants to buy my idea, that's where you combine the, what you say, what you write, and what you visualize. I think it's, it's all extremely important. So I don't think you should limit just the visualize. Visualization is, is there to, to, as I said, to make it more memorable, to, to, so you keep that long term. And also the process of visualizing is, is very good for the creative mindset. I think, I'm not sure whether I answered the question, but that's how, how I would approach it. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting. And another question from Chunky, 
uh, probably refers to students taking notes during a lecture or a lesson. The okay. question is, uh, when should one take visual notes during a lesson or after the lesson? And okay, probably it means that, uh, yeah, yeah, please go on. Please respond to it. Okay, this is a great question. Yeah, this is what I learned the hard way. Okay, <laughs> I used to take, uh, I, and so I'm just copying this to put in the, the the YouTube chat room. I used to learn the hard way. I tried to take visual notes uh, through the through the lecture itself, or the talks, or the conferences, and so on. Uh, and because you see the experts, there are experts that do that. Oh, my message is too long. Okay, uh, I will post it in the YouTube chat room. So okay, so that that was. Let me just go back to the room. Okay, multitasking. I found that the hard way. Yeah, it's true. It's not easy. So what? So what? You must remember. What is the most important to do when you take notes? What is the most important? It's not the visuals. When you're taking notes, the most important is to capture the key concepts and see how they're connected. So what I discovered from my own experience was, I, I will not draw so much in class. What I'll do is I will try to uh, extract the key concepts and try to to see the connections relation. Maybe in a mind map or maybe just simple uh, note taking without a mind map. But I will not focus so much on the visual part. The visual part you do later, uh, you find time. And it's never a waste of time to revise your notes. And, and you don't have to spend so much time to make it so beautiful visually. The idea is to visualize what you have learned. So in other words, uh, the most important when you're in a class is not to visualize, is to capture the key information, the key knowledge, the key concepts, and hopefully see how they're connected. Because sometimes your idea on how to visualize this might come while you're sleeping, right? So that's why I realize sometimes when I visualize in, in live, uh, I realize I, I, it's not so good than th reflecting upon it afterwards. So the most important, again, in the lecture or in the talk or whatever you're telling, is to capture the keywords, the key concepts, and hopefully see how they're connected. Maybe through a simple map, mind map or something, it, it, if you ask me, that that will be the, I would approach it in terms of vision note-taking. Vision note-taking is something that I would do later unless you're really good at it. And sometimes the... Uh, it depends on who's presenting. So if I'm presenting just three words, right, in the whole, then I have time to draw. But some lectures, they have so many keywords to present, you don't have time to visualize it. So it depends on the, there's a lot of issues, but the most important thing is to capture the key information first and then think about visualization. That's, uh, if you can do both at the same time, it's okay. But the more important is the keywords, key concepts, and how they are connected. Okay, I think, Prof. Amal, I think I hope they answered the, uh, the question. That's yeah, uh, yeah, at least. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is one question from uh, Jay Mitra. He says that he uh, wants to know if there is any negative side of this technique. Negative? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the thing is, the, the, the biggest challenge you know, is, is, is the issue of time. Uh, okay. It's not just, even if you can draw, is you, you spend so much time on your visual notes that you don't have time to cover the subject. I think that's one of the challenges. And then you want to cover the subject, not or, or whatever you're learning. Uh, if not, I'm talking for studies. For re, re, for creativity is different. But as a student or a teacher, you have you don't have much time uh, to to visualize because if you do visualization or vision notes, you don't have time to cover everything. So so always I say the first most point is to capture the key information, knowledge, and it's connected. Uh, and if you ask me if there's anything that you should visualize, the most important thing to visualize is something that you know is so essential and so important that will help you not only for your studies, but for life. And that's where lectures can help out also is that sometimes they give a lecture, they have a hundred slides, right? But what is the, the absolute must? They must, this is, this is, they have to know this, okay? Even when they, they got to know, the, not just for the exam, for life. Uh, I think that's where lectures can play a better role in, in, in the, it doesn't have to be visual, but they have to be play a better role in identifying that. Sometimes students go into a medical lecture, they have a hundred slides and they just, they go out and say, what is important here? Uh, sometimes they're not, they're not good at uh, analyzing and breaking it down and, and so on. So that, that's maybe where from an academic side, they can play an important role. So I think the negative okay. part is the time aspect. Do I have time yeah. to do this or not? Uh, and then there are two questions, one by Tamil Mani and another okay. by Abhijit. Maybe you can uh, answer it in a combined. Tamil okay. Mani wants to know any tools related to coding and problem solving skill. And Abhijit okay. wants to know, can we use this as a storyboard format if required? Okay. Uh, so storyboard but, okay, and, the, 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 uh, okay, the programming aspect, I'm, I'm not a programmer, but yes, definitely you can visualize from programming, but I, I, I don't have a, a good answer for the programming aspect, but that, that gives me a challenge. I will look into that, how to, inform. but in terms of storytelling, yes. If you, if you look at, uh, if you want to work, if you want to work, say that you want to work for big animation companies like Pixar, Walt Disney, and so on, what, what did they, how did they create animation in the first place? It's storyboarding, right? 
that is storytelling. So what they do is they, I now they sometimes use tablet, but then in old days they just use pieces of paper. They write small sketches and they 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 write, they draw out the scenes. So the idea to be able to to sketch uh, simple stories, it, it can be in comic format, but it doesn't have to be in comic format. But you know that skill is, is so essential, and and I think it's very important to remember that it's not about the quality of the drawing. If you're doing storytelling, it's about the quality of the story, because. If you're doing the sketching for storyboarding, that storyboard is not going to become the animation. So what the idea here is to come up with a great story, but you're using the drawing to get so people get a big, better visual of that story. And that's especially when in, when you do uh, entertainment, right? So what, I prepare a story, right? A storyboarding, and then I bring in a focus group, and then I I just go through the pictures that I've done and I tell the story. So the pictures is, is an enhancement empowering you to get a bigger understanding. As, as I talk, I go through some of the scenes which you cannot explain through words maybe, but the drawings help you to do that. And in that context, the drawing doesn't have to be very nice, but it's just enhancing the story. And I think for the student perspective is that it allows the students to to think about more about the visualization of the environment in the story and so on through their own drawing. But I think it's very important for the teacher not to get obsessed whether the drawing is bad or good, but they focus on what's the purpose of this storytelling. It's the story. The drawing is there just to empower, enhance, the, and make it more engaging. Uh, so I think that's very important. The teacher don't get lost in the drawing is not nice. You're, you know, Focus on the, what, what is the purpose. That's why I say when I teach drawing, drawing is a tool. So it's a tool to improve your memory. It's a tool to improve your thinking skills. It's a tool to improve you as a teacher, to simplify, to illustrate. Uh, for innovation, it's about coming up with a better idea. Maybe your drawing is terrible, but the idea is amazing. But that drawing triggers that moment of uh, spark, of aha moment. So that's where the drawing comes in. But for art, it's usually sometimes different. The, the drawing itself becomes so critical, right? So I think that's where when people ask me to see art teachers, I, I have sometimes a challenge to tell them that don't get lost in the drawing itself. Focus more on what is the purpose of that drawing. Uh, I think that that's how I would, I would approach it. <laughs> okay. You're, you're mute. Uh, Prof. Ramesh is mute now. <laughs> Just now you're not mute. Now you're mute. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was. Uh, uh, Dr. P. Arul Nehru wants to know, can we use visual note taking for academic purpose and in higher education? Perhaps now he must have received his answer because... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, Captain okay. The, beautifully explained. Uh, no, no. I think uh, I, I showed mostly uh, drawings that are done in a slide format. Uh, so mm -hmm. visual note taking can take the three ways. Usually, it can take live. So I have a whiteboard. So instead of just putting sometimes words on the whiteboard like bullets, I can try to visualize it. Maybe it could be a stick figure, or it could be if it's anatomy. You instead of saying the heart, you're showing on the slide. You're actually illustrating maybe a muscle. Because one thing about drawing live, uh, unless you're very good in animation, is it. It, it allows people to digest what you're learning. Sometimes when you have a slide, it's just like bang, <laughs> 30, 40 things. But when you illustrate live, uh, it kind of simplifies because you don't have time to draw so fast, right? So it, it actually, that's why a lot of people like drawing when they illustrate or illustration is because it's, it, it allows the brain to digest what you're learning. And also it allows the teacher to really know whether he, he knows his subject or not. Because when you show slides, you think you know, because you are the expert, right? But when you illustrate, it, you, it will really test whether you know the subject matter and you're very good at actually teaching it. Because sometimes slides deceive you, right? You have all these nice slides, but you don't know the subject well, but you, you don't know how well to teach it. So actually when you start illustrate, then you realize whether you really know how to teach the subject or not. So actually drawing can be a very good tool to test yourself whether you can teach the subject well or not. Uh, so that's okay, maybe a how... Uh, <clears throat> I think there is one unique uh, question. Perhaps we can take it, uh, Dr. Uh, Narginti, uh, uh, Reddy wants to know how can we use it for visually challenged students. That is a visually challenged students. Yes, uh, pe people that cannot see. Uh, for okay. inclusive <laughs> education. <laughs> okay, I, I, that, that's where you you probably I I I, I mean, uh, then a uh, might be unless they have a tool to dice to 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 make it into touch that you the visual becomes something that you can feel uh, i'm not sure how you can do that but then words become if you, then it becomes the voice and the words and there are tools now that you touch so even when you have the alpha you touch it and then it, it, it vibrates on your hands so you can feel the drawing but i think this is uh that, that's where vision noting definitely is a weakness if, if i cannot see then vision noting might be challenging but you can still visualize without seeing but that will be beyond a drawing or that would be more through Prof. Amul's expertise in language and in terms of <laughs> expressing ideas and, and they can picture that. But I'm, I'm not sure because I, I unfortunately I have not, I, I've done the workshop for deaf, deaf, 
not de dead, but deaf people. But I've not done a workshop for blind. Uh, so, that, but for deaf people, yes, people that cannot speak, visualization becomes can become a very powerful uh, aspect for. Okay. For yeah. One of our friend from Mumbai, Dr. Amol. He is also <laughs> same name uh, with Professor Amol. Uh, he wants to know: Can we use visual note taking for developing multiple intelligence in children? And perhaps we can, after that, uh, maybe close. Okay. Are we talking about uh, the nine intelligence or eight intelligence? Yeah, the multiple that? intelligence of Robert Harvard. Uh, okay. I think. Uh, w w okay. I I'm not going to go to all the nine intelligence, but I think one no. of the things. Uh, first of all, uh, one thing I discovered when I study learning skills and study brain development and so on. Actually, our whole body is involved in the learning process. I think that's one of the challenges when you sit in a classroom, you're sitting, I'm sitting in this chair, even if you're listening to me and I'm just listening, you're actually putting your rest of your body to sleep. It's just your brain trying to keep yourself awake to listen to you. So I think it's very important for students uh, to get more of their body and the senses involved in the learning process. Now, what, what uh, visual drawing does, if, you, if, you're, if you're drawing itself, is, is this, I've talked to medical, is your thumb and index finger usually you hold the pen like this, right? So these two fingers actually are very connected to the brain. If, if, you, if you can Google your thumb and finger, how much of the brain is connected to these two fingers, is that when you activate, not say drawing, even writing also, is that so much of the brain is activated in the process of just holding this pen. So even if you're doodling, if I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm just doodling, mindless doodling, huh? my brain is much more active. I might be more actively listening to you and I'm just li listening and watching. So the act of, of, of drawing is, is not just uh, 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 visual thinking. It's all the kinesthetic, kinesthetic intelligence, right? Yes. Movement yes. Uh, and so on. So it helps a lot. A steadiness, confidence. If you are, I mean, confidence is not a... But I think drawing also can build that aspect of confidence. It can be the opposite also. But if you can illustrate something as a teacher, you become more confident in your teaching that you can illustrate some of the things that you wanted to do and so on. So definitely will activate more than uh, the visual aspect. But I can't say all eight intelligence because you have uh, music intelligence. You have, I mean, you have, there's so many other intelligence to, to, to expose. But drawing can play. Okay, my main message here is that drawing is not everything. Today, my, my job topic is on visual things. But I'm focused on drawing. So the, the one thing that really excited me with drawing was when I started looking at Leonardo da Vinci. And I was trying to ask, how could he understand 500 years ago? How can he come up with so many amazing ideas 500 years ago? But then when I start realizing his, his obsession with looking at nature, because most of the great ideas today also, you know, just look at Star Wars. You know Star Wars? I used to be a big Star Wars fan. And I used to look at, you know all the characters in Star Wars? They're so amazing, right? The characters. But actually, if you were to spend time in the bug world, study bugs, study crazy fish, most of the characters in Star Wars, they look like those bugs. I, there's something called a peacock spider. You Google after a peacock spider. He looks like one of the Star Wars characters. So, so if we can get kids to look at these kind of things and expose them to this kind of thing, they, they can create the imagination. That's what the idea of, of a drawing is not just observing. You start looking at things. and Because most of the great ideas, even the Wright brothers, they were, if I'm not mistaken, how they, they built the wings, they were looking at, I'm not sure it was a hawk, but the movement of the, they, they suddenly saw the twitch. And the, because of the twitch, they realized, oh, the wings should be loose. Then the, the because they used to the wings hard, but then it is, if the wings are loose, it can actually fly. So, so that aspect of people not just looking at the screen and looking at all these things, they're looking at nature. And that's where, again, uh, art, art comes in. You look at nature and observe, and then you try to see patterns, connections, and connect it to technology. Like, for example, the wings of bugs can use for planes, you know. So all these kind of things, we want to have more that curiosity in kids. So I think that that's, I'm not sure if I'm answering the question, but that's another area that, uh, I like when people not just look at things, they try to draw it. Because once you start to draw it, you start seeing details that you don't see by just looking. I think that's one of the powers of drawing. Like, for example, just drawing a door. You know a door? You know, sometimes you you think, I, I ask the student, where's the doorknob on the left or right side? Sometimes they, they, they open a door all their life. They can't. But once, you, once you've drawn a door, you start thinking, of course, actually, it's on both sides. Sometimes some... In countries, they're more on the left side, some on the right side. But then you start thinking about things you never thought about. So that's one of the things that I, I was really admire uh, Leonardo da Vinci, that he could observe all these things and that can create the tanks and uh, all this mechanic, amazing stuff from parachutes and all that. So, but I think many of the ideas came from just looking at nature, looking at the amazing and painting them and then that draw ideas and then connecting it with things that were relevant to, to that time. Yeah. So if you can get that curiosity back in kids, it would be very good. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, th thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Captain Jet. Uh, a wonderful captain. presentation. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> our captain. And uh, uh, we have re received uh, a wonderful comments, uh, positive comments uh, in the chats in the YouTube. So I think now we can, uh, I will request Professor uh, Amor to uh, say a few words. But before that, I would like to uh, uh, tell you that uh, uh, the recording of this session will be available on our university, same link uh, after this, uh, it will be saved. And uh, then uh, we have posted the uh, link for attendance. Those who are yet to mark it, kindly fill up that uh, Google form. It asks only two things, your email ID and your actual name, which will go into the certificate. But for certificates, kindly give us some time because uh, you have uh, made this program so successful by joining us in large numbers. So we will now take some time in making those certificates and sending it by email to you on the email which you have provided, you are going to provide us in the form. So uh, I, I, hope you, words, I hope you're using artificial intelligence huh? <laughs> to do the e-certification. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yes. So uh, 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 may I request now Professor Amol to give his concluding remarks and then we will close. Thank you. I think after such a wonderful feast, there is uh, not much point to spoil the test by saying a few things. I'll just simply say that you have fired our imagination. And you have oh, also you. shown lots of practical and concrete ways in which we can actually build on that imagination. So I'm sure we will definitely have some changes in our practice now on. Thank you so much. It has been a very fabulous session. And thanks everyone for joining us. Can I just say again, thank you very much for inviting me, uh, for spending time with me, and for those who attended, uh, all the participants. Maybe we can give a big clap, everyone who's still there. I still, oh, there's yes. still people that we will give a clap for everyone to be here. And 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 I know I I just want to apologize. I was a bit fast, I know, but I was just I wanted to share because I I don't know if I'll see many other people again. Uh, and another thing is, I'm building actually a, a visual note taking course, and I hope by mm -hmm. the end of the year, uh, it will be very uh, practical. But of course, it will be a session like this where you just explode to get people excited but then the second stage is come back to the practical how to make it really work for teachers how can make it work for students and how to make it work for innovators and creators and so on but again thank you very much uh ambedkar university uh and also prof ramesh prof amul and also the vice chancellor which was on the <laughs> thing thank you very much yeah. so i really appreciate the opportunity and i hope we can find ways to connect again and 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 you know and, and inspire people. It's not about just visual noting. It's just using drawing as a tool to, to improve uh, so much aspects of yourself uh, in, in, in many fields and areas. That's, that's uh, my main message. But visual noting is one of those areas that are extremely powerful and very excited about. <laughs> yes. So thank you very uh, much. Uh, thank you, Jed. And uh, perhaps uh, it was not your fast speed, but you were bubbling with energy. So <laughs> <laughs> that goes with that. Now I would like to uh, place on record my deep uh, sense of appreciation for my colleagues in the IT services department of the university. Uh, they have been managing all these things in the back end. So Dinesh ji, uh, Ramiz and uh, uh, Mukesh uh, Ashutosh, my friends there, thank you so much. And uh, I would like to place on record our deep uh, gratitude to our senior management leadership of the university, vice chancellor and provost chancellors and Professor Amol, thank you so much for being with us for the full duration. So namaste everyone and very soon see you in some next session. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you.